Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we are going to be looking at how to properly write fears. It appears to me that I could have written this closer to Halloween or a more spookier time, but the inspiration struck me, so why not? Fears are such a good tool for character development and they are so often overlooked. We are so focused on what the characters motivations, goals, hopes, dreams, aims, that kind of thing, all the positive stuff. We want to know what they want in life. We want to know how they're going to get this thing. However, fears come and go. They seem to be only, you know, relevant when the plot demands it, whereas they can actually be a greater motivator than any ambition. <laughs> The thing is, it's not really often done right. We don't really have the chance to get a good look into this character's fear. And when it does show up, it feels very rushed and sudden, and there doesn't seem to be much build up to it in the long run. However, when it's done right, it can be phenomenal and heartbreaking. And sometimes you don't really know where it's going to go. You don't know whether the character's going to overcome this fear or be swallowed by it. And that is really what makes the difference between a strong character and the potential for a future villain. <laughs> Overcoming a fear is a fantastic arc. It can just open so many doors for characters. It can make them so much stronger. It can make them more relatable. And sometimes it can also make them more vulnerable to the people around them. But again, that doesn't have to be a bad thing, especially if you're going to be using tropes like the found family and stuff like that. However, the anti-arc where a character regresses and gets worse because they can't overcome this fear that they become swallowed by it can turn into moments of rage and panic and impulse acting that makes, in their mind, they're acting perfectly rational. This is a fear that they want to avoid and they're going to do it at any costs. However, they are actually being swallowed by it and ended up coming out worse as a result. But along with the concept of facing fears and sometimes even accepting them, there's that understanding that maybe the fear wasn't as bad as they thought. Maybe the thing that they're fearing the most, that gives them ambition to try and succeed, isn't actually that bad. The best examples I can think of are Pixar movies, and I'm going to use them as examples right now. <laughs> so just so you know, there will be spoilers for Monsters Inc, Monsters University and Up, so if somehow you haven't seen these films yet, then I will put a time, a time stamp of when I'm going to finish talking about them, but please watch them. Oh my god, how have you not seen them yet? <laughs> so let's look at Monsters University first. Mike Wazowski has this ambition to be a top scarer, that he is going to be one of the best, because he has this fear of failure, a fear of being forgotten, a fear of not being seen as the monster he is. He is constantly terrified with this reminder that he's not like other monsters, that he's not scary. So this is his ambition driven by fear. However, we know that he doesn't become a scarer. He doesn't succeed. He doesn't end up being this big, terrifying creature. However, we also know that because he doesn't achieve this, and because he's accepted this fear and learned to overcome it, he ends up being the duo of one of the most successful companies that doesn't even have anything to do with scaring, that changes the monster world for the better. So by facing this fear, he actually understands that it's not as bad as he thought and therefore can be something better, not just for himself, but for everyone around him as well. And that is a great example. <laughs> we look at Carl Fredrickson from Up and his fear is that he let his late wife down, that he never made it, that they never made it to Paradise Falls together, that he felt like he let her down in some way, and it's that fear of ending up so forgotten without adventure, that he really let down the love of his life, that drives him on this journey. He doesn't care about anything else, however the relationships he makes along the way, and the way he sees the world, he never makes it to Paradise Falls. He never, you know, lives out his life on that on that waterfall, he never makes it there. He ends up back home, but with a new adventure and a new family and a new outlook on life. He faced that fear and realised that the people around him are still having adventures that still want him there. He is able to grow from that. Both of these are examples of characters having to 
understand that even though something is scary, sometimes something good can come from it. Sometimes there is more to life than meets the eye, that this fear isn't, you know, it's still justified, but it isn't as bad as it could be. And therefore they're able to grow and develop. And it just builds so much more about this character so that they can grow and move on and just, yes, development. It just really smashes home development and you really want to see those little victory stories and those bittersweet moments where it's not what you thought but it's still going to be amazing. <laughs> Fears can be split up into, I think, I don't want to say rational and irrational because in everybody's mind everybody's fear is rational so there's no point using those labels but there is a surface, I want to call it a surface fear and a deeper fear. Everyone has surface fears. So example, your character could be terrified of spiders, which in their mind is a perfectly justifiable thing. However, they could also have a deeper fear, maybe a fear of being alone, of being forgotten, a fear of isolation. And that can be presented in so many different ways. The surface fears are more played up for comedic relief or just a little bit of like, oh yeah, they have a character flaw, they're scared of this. And it can be something really, really small. You know, if anyone actually has those fears, I'm not calling your fears small at all. I'm just saying that in comparison. I'm just digging myself into a hole here, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Surface fears have a primal gut instincts about them, where when they see something, it is an instant reaction. And that can be really fun to play around with. It can be a paralyzing, oh Jesus, I can't move, this is horrifying kind of reaction, or it can be one of those passive, yeah, I'm not scared of it, but I ain't going near it kind of thing, where you know the character's scared, and it's one of the, especially if it's like, you know, the big tough character that suddenly has this tiny little fear and everyone else is just making fun of them for it, or it can be something like, you know, the, the small happy-go-lucky character is actually terrified of the dark and some, suddenly everyone is just like, we must protect the baby. <laughs> Those are more played up for fun, they're played up for a little bit of character development, a little bit of like a bonding thing between different characters, but they're rarely played seriously, which is fine, which is fine. Everyone's allowed fears like that. Everyone has fears like that. I know I have a few. <laughs> Those are good for smaller situations that don't really have to be addressed all that often, but they're going to have some type of relevance along the way, but you just don't know where it's going to come from yet but it is the deep emotional fears that are really going to push your characters forward and they can be presented in god knows how many different ways if i was to list every single one then first of all the, the my battery on my camera would run out along with the memory and i don't think youtube allows videos that long so yes <laughs> we're gonna try and limit it down to a few core examples here it is the deep emotional fears that are going to push your character forward towards their aims. Having a fear of the dark is not going to make them want to be the hero to save the world, for example. If they are scared of spiders, then they are not going to be using that to save their family from the brink of death, etc. It's, it's not going to be that simple. Your character could have a very strong desire for success. They want to achieve everything that they have on their list. They want to be the best of the best simply because they are driven by a fear of being forgotten. Maybe when they were younger they were made to feel weak, they were made to feel small, and therefore that is rooted as a deep emotional fear that then makes them want to succeed and be as strong as they can be in the future. Maybe your character has a fear of being alone, but they're seeing it as they just want to be part of a team, that they want to belong, that they want to have a family. But then you look at it and actually maybe they were really severely abused and isolated when they were younger, and that has cemented this view of I can't be alone. If I'm alone, I am weak and it hurts. I need to be around people. It's that kind of thing. You need to keep in mind when you're building this character and you're putting these fears and the ambitions together, not only what your character is running to, but also what they're running from. So how do we write fear properly and how do we really exploit it for all it's worth? Well, you need to keep a balance. You need to have those fun little fears that you can play with every now and again, but you need to have the emotional fear as well that is going to drive them forward. Have it be relevant to the character, relevant to the story. Have it play about naturally. Leave little clues here and there, but don't go overboard with it. You don't want to make your reader feel like an idiot and spell everything out for them. Like, yes, this person is scared of being alone. This person is scared of failure. This person, it's just going to be very, not only repetitive, but it's also going to make the reader think, well, I'm, I'm not dumb, I could have put that together, so why are you spelling it out for me? 
it's much more fun to let the fear build, to let the tension build when you're writing and just sprinkle little hints and tips, not hints and tips, <laughs> sprinkle little hints here and there for people to pick up on and then they can put the picture together themselves so when the big reveal happens it's just as heartbreaking. <laughs> Write the fear like the fear. Does that make sense? Write the fear like the fear? Write the fear like the feeling of fear it creeps in through the cracks. Sometimes you don't even know that this feeling of tension and that, you know, clammy feeling, you don't know that it's there until it full on hits you. You can have a bit of an, an ease in the air, you can have, you know, a bad feeling, but sometimes you don't know that this fear is creeping up on you until it is standing right in front of you. And it needs to be the same with your writing, rather than just spelling it out, let it seep in, let it overwhelm the reader until it is suddenly unavoidable. <laughs> Does your character have a subconscious need to not be alone? Does your character always run in all guns blazing without any thought for their own safety? Are they weirdly chipper and happy in grim situations? All of these can really give little hints into what your character is actually fearing. If they don't want to be alone, then maybe they make an active effort to be part of every single team mission, even though they know they're not going to be necessary or needed, or they're exhausted and they need to rest, but they would much rather push themselves to the limit than be on their own. Maybe they've lost people in the past, so they have this underlying fear of losing more loved ones, which is why they're just so eager to go guns blazing, because they would rather take the damage than those around them. It, it can just be exploited in multiple ways, and it's good to put the pieces together and also try and link in what kind of reaction your character would have. But it's also good to remember that sometimes people aren't as in tune with their own mind as others, so they might not even realise what their deep-rooted fear is until it is standing right in front of them. Therefore, they can be completely blindsided and paralysed with fear and not know what to do, not know how to react, because they've never actually had that realisation before, and then that can be a great thing to overcome later on. They are completely thrown off their game, and now they have to rebuild themselves. A loner anti-hero could claim that he hates being around other people, and that this group that he's found himself in that he'll ditch at a moment's notice as soon as this job's done, but then he sees that one of them is in danger and he has this horrible moment of just seeing them getting hurt and he can't take it and will rush into action because he realises that he is fearing losing them more than he is being on his own again. And it can just, just it can really pack in the feels. <laughs> Now they have to deal with this sense of overprotectiveness that they've never felt before. They have to come to terms with the fact that these people aren't just there to do a job, that they're actually part of a family now. It can just open so many doors and I love shit like that. <laughs> having a good revelation can be just as good as having a slow burn fear and I love it. <laughs> they can go through the stages of grief once they realise what this fear is. Maybe it can, I think, if they're just realising what the fear is or if they've known it all along, when it finally starts to come to light, whether it be that they are starting to realise it on their own or if their teammates are starting to realise what's going on, they are going to go through the stages of grief. Not because they've lost somebody, maybe, that's up to you, but they're going to go through stages of anger, denial, bargaining. They're going to try and pass this off as just something stupid, that it's nothing to worry about, that they don't need to talk about it, that they don't want to talk about it. However, it is going to lead to an eventual acceptance, and that is going to be where your character either develops into something better or regresses into something darker, and that is up to you. <laughs> so what's going to be your character's new motivation? When they realise what their fear is, there is going to be a time when they're going to overcome it, or they're going to think that they overcome it, but actually don't. How is that going to affect your character's goals, ambitions, motivations? Because now, not only do they realise what this fear is, but now they're also trying to overcome it, but still succeed in some way. If they don't have the fear anymore, if they've overcome it, then what is going to be their new motivation? Are they going to use that fear in a positive way, or are they going to just completely overcome it and be like, poof, why was I ever scared of that? And then they have to replace it with something else in order to give them that drive. Don't forget about the drive. <laughs> Again, I don't want to use the phrase irrational and rational fears, so, you know, the surface fears and the emotional fears, they can be blurred. They can have such a thin line between them, and that is what is going to make a very interesting read. And by that I mean, how can you 
make things more twisted. <laughs> Claustrophobia, a fear of small spaces, it seems very minimal compared to deep emotional trauma. But then, what if they have had deep emotional trauma? What if the reason they're scared of small spaces is because they were hurt as a, at a young age and locked away in a very small space as a punishment? So therefore, when they are put in a small space, there is that panic of, oh god, it's happening again. Granted, claustrophobia can just be claustrophobia where you don't like small spaces. I have that. I don't like small spaces. The only time I like small spaces is if I can clearly see where the exit is and then I'm okay. But that's just me being me. I don't have any, you know, deep emotional things linking to claustrophobia. That's just me. However, other characters might differ. They might have a reason behind that seemingly small, random fear. And that can be twisted and horrible and heartbreaking, but it makes for good development. You can take you can take the smallest of fears and amplify them into something huge depending on your character's backstory, which is why it is so important to have a character backstory in the first place. And that is also something that people forget, but that is a video for another day. Finally, body language and thought process. It is all very well and good having these fears and having reasons behind them, but you need to have the right reaction to them as well. What is it that really gets under your character's skin, that makes them break out in a cold sweat, that makes them paralysed where they cannot move? Everything is going to have some kind of physical reaction as well as an emotional one, whether it's a fight or flight reflex or just something even stranger that they just can't control, whether it be a piercing scream or whether it's, you know, just outright fainting, you never know. <laughs> Just remember the show don't tell rule, sometimes less is more, that, you know, th those two wonderful cliches that we use so often here. <laughs> the more subtle the process from the beginning, the more impact it's going to be when it finally builds up into that crescendo. You are going to have so much more of an atmosphere and attention build if they, you know, they, they start feeling like they're, they're heart racing and then they notice that you know, something in the air isn't quite right here, and then suddenly, boom, it all just breaks out. <laughs> An overwhelming rage, the feeling like you can't breathe, bursting into tears, the, your mind just completely blanking. It, fear takes so many different forms, so therefore the reaction is going to have so many different forms as well, and that is where you can just really run with it. <laughs> it all depends on the character's personality, it can mimic their personality, it can clash with their personality, you never quite know what you're going to get, but that is what is so fun, the experimentation with it all. <laughs> so that is pretty much all I have for you when it comes to fears. I really enjoyed this video, I had a lot of fun. I know when it comes to the more dark and twisted topics, I tend to have a little bit more fun. That says a lot about me, doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, fears can come in so many different shapes and sizes, and they can be twisted and altered and amplified in any way you see fit, and it all depends on the characters backstory, reactions, and how they want to progress. The fear is just as good as the motivation, sometimes they can even be the same thing, it is all up to you to experiment with it. <laughs> so I hope this video helped you in some way, I definitely had a lot of fun making it, and yeah, I will end this video here. So I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye my scriptless.